Welcome back to Antibody Basics by BioInchon, Part 4. In this episode, we'll continue to cover antibody formats, specifically single-chain variable fragments. So what are single-chain variable fragments? They are a form of engineered antibody fragment that have become increasingly important in therapeutic and diagnostic applications due to their unique structural and functional properties. SCFVs consist of the variable region of the heavy VH and light VL chains of immunoglobulins connected by a short, flexible linker peptide. This configuration maintains the antigen binding specificity of conventional antibodies while offering a smaller and versatile structure. Here you can see a diagram of a traditional IgG and on the right of it you can see an SCFV. One of the first research papers about SCFVs was published in 1988 by Huston and their team. They designed an SCFV with a single polypeptide connected with a 15 amino acid linker. It showed clear specificity against digoxin. In the 1990s, there was refinement of SCFV technology, addressing issues such as stability and solubility. There was also an increasing interest in potential applications in diagnostics and therapeutics. In the early 2000s, there was growing use of SCFVs, particularly in diagnostic applications, including immunoassays and imaging in addition to therapeutic purposes, especially in cancer targeting. By the mid-2000s, introduction of bispecific SCFVs uh, it was shown to be capable of binding to two different antigens simultaneously. And now, from the 2010 to the present time, SCFVs began entering clinical trials for therapeutic applications, with ongoing research to improve stability, bioavailability, and reducing potential immunogenicity. Traditional antibodies are Y-shaped molecules composed of two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains. Each arm of the Y structure contains a variable region responsible for antigen recognition. The stem of the Y comprises constant regions that mediate immune responses. Since SCFVs are engineered antibodies, they have advantages over the conventional formats. One of those examples are their size. Being significantly smaller, SCFVs can penetrate tissues more effectively reaching targets that may be inaccessible to full-size antibodies. Production is also an advantage as they can be rapidly and inexpensively produced in various expression systems, including bacteria, yeast, and mammalian cells. They are also flexible and adaptable as the genetic manipulation of SCFVs is simpler, allowing for the creation of customized antibody fragments with specific properties such as increased stability or altered specificity. In addition, they may have reduced immunogenicity as the immunogenicity generated by the FC portion of the antibody is absent in the conventional SCFV molecule. Single-chain variable fragments have several possible expression systems for their expression and generation. One of the major expression systems are bacterial systems, for example E. coli, which is the most commonly used host due to its simplicity, rapid growth, low cost, and high yields up to 10-30% to of the total cellular protein. However, SCFVs produced in this way may require proper folding and might lack glycosylation, which is essential for some applications. Another expression system is yeast. Yeasts, like Pichia pastoris, offer a middle ground, providing post-translational modifications and higher yields than bacterial systems. Another system are mammalian cell lines. For example, Chinese hamster ovary cells are used when complex post-translational modifications such as glycosylation are necessary for the SCFV's function. Another example are plants. One team successfully produced recombinant single-chain variable fragments to ERBB2 with functional expression in stable transgenic tobacco plants. And finally, we have insects. Chu and the research team expressed a functional recombinant cytolytic immunotoxin SCFV MELFLAG in Spodoptera frugiperida ovarian cells. There are two common display libraries for single-chain variable fragments. The first is phage display libraries. 
macrophage display involves displaying SCFVs on the surface of bacteriophages, allowing for the rapid selection of SCFVs with high affinity for specific antigens. There are three common types. There are immune libraries, which are constructed from variable domains of antibody genes of B cells derived from immunized animals such as mice, camel, sheep, and humans. There are also naive libraries derived from non-immunized donors of B cells constructed from a pool of V genes of IgM mRNA. These libraries are not biased towards any antigen. And then we have synthetic libraries derived from non-immune sources and prepared synthetically by combining germline gene sequences together with randomized complementary determining regions, or CDRs, that are responsible for antigen binding. Secondly, we have in vitro ribosomal display technology. Ribosome display technology, or RDT, is a cell-free system that overcomes many limitations of cell-based methods by producing in vitro protein mRNA complexes. This method is more efficient when screening large libraries as it does not compromise transformation efficiency, selecting high-affinity combining sites and eukaryotic cell-free systems, which are capable of post-translational modifications. The first step is a DNA library of SCFV which is transcribed and translated in vitro to create the complex for selection on the immobilized antigen. Secondly, the mRNAs specifically bound to the antigen are eluded, followed by reverse transcription and further selection from the enriched regenerated DNA pool. Single-chain variable fragments are highly useful in diagnostic applications. They can be used as diagnostic regions in several different assay formats, including ELISA tests. There are advantages in that they can bind to a variety of molecules, such as haptins, proteins, or whole pathogens, and detection can be done using secondary antibodies, recognizing specific tags fused to the C or N terminus of the SCFV. You can improve their stability through protein fusions, such as with constant light chain domains, FC fragments, or alkaline phosphatase. You can also improve protein folding via phage format in ELISA assays, where the SCFV remains attached to the coat protein of the filamentous phage. With new phage display antibody libraries, one can generate a range of single chain fragment variables specifically directed against any antigen economically quickly and without the bother of immunizing animals and manipulating hybridomas. Besides diagnostics, single-chain variable fragments are very useful in therapeutic applications, especially cancer treatment. They have revolutionized the landscape of targeted therapy, particularly in oncology. This is because their ability to bind specifically to tumor antigens has led to the development of highly effective, minimally invasive treatments. Examples include antibody drug conjugates. There are SCFVs linked to cytotoxic drugs. The SCFV guides the drug directly to cancer cells, improving efficacy and reducing systemic toxicity. In bispecific antibodies, these are comprising two different SCFVs. These molecules can engage two different antigens simultaneously, such as a tumor antigen and a T-cell activator, enhancing the immune response against cancer cells. However, only three SCFV-related therapeutics are approved worldwide, with currently three more in review. Blenetumumab was approved by the FDA in 2014. It is a bispecific tandem SCFV targeting CD19 and CD3 to treat acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Brolucizumab was approved by the FDA in 2019. This drug is an SCFV targeting VEGEFA, and treats neovascular age-related macular degeneration. Tabenta FUSP was approved by the FDA in 2022. This is a bispecific SCFV TCR fusion protein targeting GP100 and CD3 to treat metastatic uveal melanoma. And currently in review, we have three more bispecific antibodies which treat various cancers. BioIntron focuses on antibody discovery, expression, and optimization. Our feature service is our antibody expression from gene sequence to purified antibodies. It only takes two weeks. 
Our high-throughput platform enables the rapid expression of recombinant antibodies in HEK293 or CHO cells. We guarantee the delivery of 100 micrograms to 100 grams of recombinant antibodies. Remember, no antibody means no cost. For our VHH antibodies, we are also a well-recognized leader in antibody discovery and production. With our self-owned alpaca breeding farm, we offer a one alpaca for one project commitment and guarantee the delivery of 20 plus unique binders, high diversity and large capacity. We also have several other services, including bispecific antibodies, acucosylated antibodies, single B cell screening, hybridoma sequencing, antibody optimization, recombinant proteins, and CHO-K1 stable cell line. Thank you for watching and comment with any questions or topics you'd like us to cover next. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. In the next episode, we'll focus on other types of antibody formats.